Assetto Corsa Competizione is one of the best looking, the best sounding, and one of the most fun simulators on the market. The question I have is, how important is the CPU in running this simulator? Not just at single screens, but also triple screens. So I have eight processors. We're gonna look at them today. Three of them are from Intel, five of them are from AMD. And if you see my other videos, you might be familiar with them, but you know what, let's take a look at the details anyway. This time I've summarized the CPUs in a, a nice little table. From the top, the most expensive, the 13700K, although it's basically the same price as the competitor, the 7800X3D. And at the bottom, we have the no longer available for sale 2700, which currently goes for an eBay price of around $75. In the middle, I have uh, placed in a box the average clock speed that was monitored during the benchmark. So that's real data there. And it's important to note that I'm trying to run these at basically baseline, no overclocking, unless there's something I can click in the BIOS like PBO, XMP, Expo, memory timings, things like that. The other standout specification here is the extra L3 cache featured by the 7800X3D and the 5800X3D, 96 megabytes. I would consider the Ryzen 7600 as a mid-range processor along with the 12600K from Intel. And I think the Ryzen 5 5600 is an entry-level processor, whereas the bottom two represent older hardware and we're gonna see how they compare to the newer stuff today. Just to get some more technical information out of the way, here are the other components that are being used today. Um, lots of detail here. I'm not going to go over it specifically, but I am using a DDR5 Intel 13th gen platform, and I'm using that same uh, Z790 board with the 12600K, just so you know. So at the top of the screen throughout this video, I'm just going to be looping the benchmark run that I picked. And in the bottom left, we're going to see the graphic quality settings that I also selected. I tried to find balance between the CPU and the GPU because I want this to be relevant to users and, and what you guys might be using. I enabled DLSS because I'm using a NVIDIA graphics card and I found it to produce the least amount of artifacts. We have a lot of medium quality graphics settings. However, I do have the mirrors at 150 meters and 60 FPS. I went with SPA for the track and we're running about 20 human players and 10 AI in a total of a 30 car field. This benchmark run is just the first lap and it is my point of view driving. This was actually the first multiplayer race that I did so I was a little rusty but it ended up being the best demo for replay and benchmarking so we're just going to run with it. To introduce the benchmarks here I went with the Ryzen 2700. We can see the resolutions on the left-hand side, single screens down to triple screens. And just to remind everybody of the resolutions, here's a quick summary of that with the pixel count for each frame being rendered. Okay, so right off the bat, what we see is a CPU bottleneck uh, with the single screen setup. It doesn't matter if we're running 1080p or 4K, this processor is delivering the same frames per second. When we look at the triple screens, we see that 1080p and 1440p Again, frame rate is the same, and there's a bit of a dip around 4K, but at this point it's unclear if that's related to the CPU or the GPU. So to try and figure that out, I'm gonna show a second graph here with all the results, and that's the GPU busy ratio. If this is new to you, it's kind of a fun chart. For each bar, we're looking at the percentage of time that the GPU was busy to do work within each individual frame. So for example, at triple 1080p, if it takes 15 milliseconds to generate one frame, this chart suggests 51% of that time, the GPU was doing work. So it was only busy for maybe eight milliseconds. In contrast, at triple 4K, the GPU was working 95% uh, of the frame time. So it was busy for 14 milliseconds of the 15 milliseconds it took to generate that frame. So in the last chart, when we increased our resolution from 1080p to 4K, we didn't see a decrease in the frame rate because that extra load placed on the video card, there was overhead, there was capacity to take on that work. At triple 4K, we're seeing that nearly all of the capacity of the GPU is being used. 
as the bar approaches 100%, we are approaching maximum GPU capabilities. The lower the bar is, the more GPU headroom we have available. So we could increase the resolution or improve graphic settings without a decrease in FPS. I've also added surround 1440p to the benchmark analysis. This is a NVIDIA technology that takes all three monitors that Windows would otherwise treat as three different screens, and the NVIDIA driver handles them as if they're one giant screen for rendering. There are some annoyances and glitches in trying to do so, but I've also detected some performance implications. We don't see it here with the Ryzen 2700, but if we remove a CPU bottleneck and throw in, say, a 13700K, we do see a difference between triple 1440p and surround 1440p. I was actually quite surprised to see this 10% difference and also notice, look at the big change in the 0.2% lows. This had me dig a little deeper. I don't wanna go into too much detail here. It's not the point of this video, but I do need to show this. This is the frame time analysis for one of the benchmark runs. We're at surround 4K on a 13700K. The benchmark is 152 seconds. So we see that on the X axis. And on the Y axis, we have the frame time itself. So this represents how much time it took to render the frame during that second or instance of the benchmark. The blue squiggles are the overall frame time and the yellow squiggle is the GPU busy frame time, I guess you could say. When using surround, we're seeing a 0% deviation from the GPU busy time, which means the video card and CPU are moving in synchronization or you could also view that as a GPU limit. The only way to decrease the blue squiggles is to reduce the yellow squiggles. When we look at triple 4K, same scenario, uh, things are a little weird. When Windows and NVIDIA drivers handle the three screens separately, we're seeing these spikes. Maybe they look like stutters in real time. I looked at the demo as it was playing. I, I didn't notice it out at all. I didn't see any hiccups. It looked smooth to me. Regardless, this explains why the 0.2% lows are different and how that affects the overall average. Also note that the GPU busy time has changed with traditional triples as well. This suggests the GPU has to wait for the CPU to synchronize the simulator to the three independent screens when configured as such. When handled as a single resolution, we don't see that. I know this video is about ACC, but my last video was about iRacing, and I, I just wanna fly back there real quick and talk about surround. Here is a comparison between surround and triple at 4K on both the Red Bull Ring demo and the Daytona demo using a 13700K. While there is a performance advantage to surround, it, it is much smaller. Um, I still found spikes in the frame time analysis, but they were less frequent. This suggests ACC, which uses the Unreal Engine 4, has a much different rendering challenge than iRacing on DirectX 11. I mean, that's hardly a profound statement, but it means the CPU and GPU for performance in one simulator cannot be assumed in a different simulator. So just to sprinkle a little foreshadowing here, this is not the only anomaly I found with ACC. So let's get into all the benchmarks. So let's start with the lowest resolution and work our way up. So here's 1080p, and we see a clear advantage for the X3D cached chips. Both the 7800 and the 5800 X3D lead the way. The 7800 has a whopping 39% advantage on the 13700K, with the little brother 5800 X3D with a 12% advantage over the 13700K. The Ryzen 7600X has a 22% lead over the 12600K from Intel. So this resolution is easy work for the video card, which is the 3080 Ti. And I think we should take a look at this GPU busy chart. Excluding the 7800X3D, I think these results are what we expect. There's lots of headroom for the video card, 
uh, to move into higher resolutions. However, the 7800X3D, this is crazy. It's so quick, the 3080 Ti only has 9% headroom left at this lowest resolution. So as we increase the simulator's resolution, this early result suggests the 7800X3D is always going to be waiting on this video card. Looking at the results with the single 1440p screen now, there, there's no change in the order of the processors. The biggest change is actually with the 7800X3D, where it had almost a 40% advantage over its closest competitor from Intel. We're seeing that reduced now to a about 30% advantage. The other performance gaps between the CPUs are mostly the same. If you're running a single 1440p screen, uh, even a Ryzen 5 5600 should be able to get the job done for you. Checking in with the GPU busy ratio, and we can see why the 7800X3D's lead has shrank. The 3080Ti I'm using for these benchmarks has only a few percentage points of headroom left at just 1440p. The 5800X3D's creeping up into the high 80 percentage and both the 13700K from Intel and the Ryzen 7600X are still lagging behind in the 70s with the uh, entry level processors a bit lower down. If we're going to increase the resolution to 4K, we know now for sure we're gonna run into a GPU bottleneck. So first let's look at the GPU busy time before we look at the FPS average. And sure enough, uh, yep. <laughs> We're at 100% or 98% GPU utilized for the top four processors. I mean, this really establishes for a set of Corsa at this uh, resolution with this benchmark, we're running right up against the limitations of the 3080 Ti. We see the mid-range 12600K and the entry 5600 now in the 80s. But we do see the two legacy chips uh, still being unable to push the video card to its limits. So when we look at the average FPS, we're expecting to see the chart flatten out a little bit. There shouldn't be any big leaders here. And yep, that's what we see here. But interesting, the 7800X3D drops down to third. Now at 4K, it's only 3% faster than the 7600. Previously, it was 50% faster at 1080p and 40% faster at 1440p. This is an astonishing vol from the lead position. Speaking of, I show the 5800X3D with a solid tie with the 13700K, both of which are showing about a 6% advantage over the 7800X3D. Moving down the list, we see that the Ryzen 5600 uh, is now about 10% or so behind the 12600K. Here's a quick comparison between the processors. The FPS from the legacy and entry CPUs do not change with the increasing resolution. Therefore, you could put in a slower video card and get similar performance. The 5800X 3D wins the mid-range and would benefit from a faster GPU. The 13700K's performance flatlines at the lower resolution. The 7800X3D wins those until that shocking result at 4K. So I spent all of the weekend criticizing these results. I didn't believe them. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't um, jive with results that I've seen from other review sites involving a set of Corsa and this processor and other processors. So I was really confused. I I double checked my control panel settings, my window settings, the in-game settings, uh, Afterburner, did the BIOS. I even, uh, uh, there's a new Agisa, Agisa update and I even applied that. And I then formatted the entire windows and did a brand new install and set everything up again. And yet the results were the same. The 3 dv cache in case of the 7800X 3D is not an advantage at 4K with this benchmark. Kind of crazy. So let's look into the triple screens and see if anything changes. At triple 1080p, we basically see a tie again between the 13700K and the Ryzen 5800X 3D. 
we still see the 700X 3D in third, and the gap has increased a little bit between it and the 7600X. We notice the 12600K uh, seems to be doing decently too. So the, these results aren't too different. However, when you do look at the top four processors and their 0.2% lows, we actually see them lower than the 12600K and the 5600. So that's kind of strange. And I think it's worth looking at the GPU busy times now. The top four processors are knocking on the door of using all of the GPU's abilities at 96, 94, 95%. And the best results that came for the 0.2% lows were actually with the 12600K. And we see it uh, with a pretty sizable headroom here at uh, 80%, so 20% left on uh, available to it. And the 5600 has 76%, so 24% headroom. So that made me curious to go back and look at that funky little squiggly line frame time chart that we showed earlier. Here is the frame time with the 12600K on the left and the 13700K on the right. We see that these spikes are occurring a lot less frequently with the 12600K, and they also to be, appear to be shorter in height, so less of a delay. These spikes represent those 0.2% lows. And this visual graph coincides with the 12600K having better uh, average 0.2% lows in that chart we were just looking at. So I know what you're thinking. Well, what does the 7800X 3D look like? Well, here are its first 40 seconds. And at a glance, it looks very similar to the 13700K graph. However, notice that there are these little blue top hats on all the yellow spikes. I, I'm new to this kind of analysis, and I'm, I'm just trying to figure this out and share my results and, and get input from you guys. I'm looking forward to the comment section with this video. Um, so to me, it, it seems like there's some kind of inefficient exchange happening between the 7800X 3D and its 3D vCache and how it's placing the load on the video card or the video card is asking for something else to come back within the workload. It, something is happening there that beneath the hood and, and we're just getting the first glimpse of that. Um, I, I don't fully understand all the data behind these graphs and how CapFrameX is presenting them, but I do look forward to diving in a little deeper in future analysis. At triple 1440p, I suppose it's unsurprising at this point with this GPU limitation becoming a bigger and bigger issue that the overall average percentages are really flattening out here. Now between the 13700K, which is leading this chart, and the slowest of the modern processors, the 5600, that's only a 12% performance difference. So clearly we're bounded now by the GPU. The GPU busy chart basically confirms that assumption. And yep, I mean, pretty much everything is over 90%. Even the 9700K is close to using all of the rendering power from the video card. So what happens if we do surround 1440p with all these processors? Is, is there a change between the traditional triple setup? Um, and here's that average chart. Right away, we can see that the 1% lows and the 0.2% lows for the top processors, instead of being down in the 60s or whatever it was, has, has, has climbed up. So that's not surprising. We've removed those spikes that were happening. And the gap between the 5600 and the 3700K has increased from that 12% to 20%. The difference between the 7600X and the 7800X 3D with surround 1440p is probably too small to notice in real-time gameplay. Now, finally, for the last shocker of the video, uh, let's go triple 4K. We know we're in a GPU bind, but what's going to happen? I mean, the 13700K and the 5800X 3D have been trading the top spot leading through all of this, so I would expect one of them to come out on top and certainly can't be the 7 7800X 3D, so let's, uh, let's take a look. And the winner is the 9700K from five years ago. 
Well, actually, there's barely a measurable difference between the Intel process processors, but they are ahead of all the AMDs. Shockingly, we see the 7800X3D tumble down the list with only a 3% advantage over the now obsolete Ryzen 7 2700. Regardless, we are very GPU uh, bottlenecked here with only a 9% spread between all of the processors. It's difficult to draw any conclusions from the GPU busy chart. However, um, it is interesting that the 9700K of all of these top processors, it appears to have the lower GPU busy time, suggesting that that little extra bit of headroom is a benefit in this scenario. Here's another quick comparison between the processors. Pause if you need to. The Intel 12600K comes out ahead of the 5600 again. The 7600X has a better showing against the 5800X3D. And the 13700K has a clear victory in every triple screen resolution tested against the 7800X3D. Let's try to wrap this up. Uh, I've picked out four topics here. Right off the bat, the X3D cache seems to be quite effective at 1080p and 1440p. These lower resolutions clearly show effective CPU scaling. So if you overclock your CPU or upgrade to a newer one, ACC will run faster. But we also saw examples of the video card holding back the CPU, especially at triple 1440p and definitely at triple 4K. ACC is demanding on both processors. But if you want to average over 100 FPS at triple 1440p, a good CPU even from the last generation can do it, but you will need at least an RTX 3080 or an RTX 4070. I haven't tested AMD yet. I also showcased some unusual behavior from traditional triple screens versus surround. Um, or iFinity if you have an AMD. I'm curious what your feedback is. Do you notice these little data anomalies or are they just that, something in the data? Speaking of anomalies, uh, yeah, surprising for the 7800X3D. I'm not sure if this is an anomaly just within this simulator or maybe it still is something that I made a mistake in in my processes. I'm curious to hear your thoughts and ideas about what's happening here and maybe you have some other ideas for testing. So if you made it this far, you made it to the end, thank you for watching. You're probably one of the people that left a comment. I just want to say thank you. I wasn't expecting all that positive feedback, but I do want to keep doing stuff like this. So I encourage you, leave more comments, like, subscribe, all that silly stuff. But it does help me, and let's see what else we can learn.